Today's featured building is 215 West 8th Street. Now, when we go through all the directories with the help of Michael Carter, you'll note that the building was probably built somewhere in the 1920s or 30s because on the 1913 Sanborn map, it's still a garage. The uh, building is pretty much vacant um, when it's first built until around 1931 when a Mr. William Bass uh, purchases 215 West 8th Street. Now, William Bass um, was a barber and um, also the president of the Alco Social and Political Club. Anyhow, William um, owned the building and ran a pool hall, the social club, and a barber shop out of it all the way through about 1938. The building's again vacant in 1939. After that, it's owned by um, the or the Woodburn Roofing and Heating Company in 1957, and then in 1970, changes hands and is owned by Sarks Tarzian as a warehouse. Getting back to William Bass, since he owned it, was probably the first owner. Um, who was this guy? Well, uh, he was an African-American, first of all, uh, often referred to in all the articles we're going to talk about today as a Negro um, in his time. Um, he was the son of Lydia and Benjamin Bass. His father, Benjamin Bass, was a Civil War veteran. He served in the 28th U.S. Colored Infantry uh, during the war, mustered in in 1863, uh, December of 1863, and mustered out not long after in March of 1864. But he was mustered out just in time to miss the Siege of Petersburg and the Battle of Crater, where about half of the um, 28th U.S. Colored Infantry perished. Um, Benjamin Bass Sr. Um, started uh, when he came back to be a barber. Now, apparently he started this in Indianapolis before moving to Bloomington. He actually uh, met his wife in Bloomington, Lydia Harvey, and married her. And they moved to uh, Bloomington to start uh, the barbering, haircutting uh, business. So William Bass also had a brother, uh, an older brother named Benjamin Bass Jr. Took over the um, barbering business from his father. Why, while William uh, Bass decided to uh, get out of Bloomington and move to Buffalo, New York and start his barbering shop, there. Now you'll notice, along with Les Evans and a number of other African-American barbers uh, back in this time, from the uh, late 1800s and the early 1900s, there were a lot of barbers who were, in fact, African-American. And um, this was pretty typical at the time. Now back in the 1880s, when Ples Evans was running his shop, of course, he had to Pick either you cater to a uh, a white uh, customers only, or um, other uh, black customers. Plez, for instance, used to um, have very prominent uh, local white business owners uh, who would come to his particular place for haircuts, and he. Because of that, it became sort of a white-only establishment, even though it was owned by an African-American barber. So he had to end up giving the haircuts to African-American customers in the back. That was pretty typical of the day. Let's get back to William Bass's life. He went to uh, the Banneker School, also known as the Colored School. And... Um, uh, I guess the records show he was tardy a number of times in 1882, along with his sister, um, Verda Bass. He graduated, and uh, before moving out to Buffalo to start his own business, he lived in Bloomington and did some barbering with his older brother, Benjamin Bass. 
An interesting topic came up, however, because in 1894, he was involved in a lawsuit against a local restaurant called The Acorn. And I'm going to read from the article from the Bloomington Telephone, February 27th, 1894. William Bass, a young colored man, has brought suit against the restaurant firm of Wells and Hall for $100, alleging that he went to their place of business for lunch and that Wells and Hall refused to serve him because, because he was colored. Wells and Hall state that Bass was ejected on account of disorderly conduct and not by reason of his color. Bass states that he made no disturbance whatsoever. So Will, William went out and uh, hired uh, attorneys, East and Miller, and brought suit against this restaurant. And alleging that this refusal was because he is a colored man. This suit and its result will be watched with considerable interest as it will be the first attempt to enforce the civil rights law in this part of the state. In the Bloomington Weekly Telephone, April 3rd, 1894, page 1, the case against uh, Wells and Hall and their Acorn Restaurant uh, was settled. And it says, The case of Bass and Wells and Hall Restaurant Keepers ended with a verdict for Wells and Hall after the jury had been out for only a few hours. This was the base brought by Bass who is a colored man for $100 in damages, alleging that he was ejected from uh, his place or business on account of his color. Wells and Hall testified that he had not refused services because of his color, but for the reason that he was disorderly. So William just went back to work with his brother, Benjamin Bass Jr. And their shop, according to this article, was located... Uh, very close to uh, the Gentry part of the block. It says here, Henry Gentry will begin early this spring to remodel the west end of his building, uh, corner of 5th Street and the Avenue, that being college, the part occupied by the Bass and May Barbershop. Then tragedy struck in 1895. Uh, Benjamin Bass Jr., his brother, um, died. This is in the Bloomington Daily Telephone in 1917. Benjamin Bass, age 45, died last night at the home of his mother, Miss Lydia Bass, the result of lung trouble. He was a barber by trade and was born and raised in Bloomington and was always popular amongst the home folks. Uh, after the death of his brother, William Bass returned to Bloomington. Benjamin Bass Sr., by this point, had already passed away. Um, and in fact, William's parents had actually divorced in 1895 when William was 23. In the divorce hearings, um, Lydia, uh, she alleges that uh, Benjamin Bass Sr. treats her cruelly and inhumanely, curses and abuses her, strikes and beats her, admits that he is going with women of bad repute and is spending his money on them and that he intends to do so in the future and that he spends days and nights at the homes of these women. One thing I'd like to add that I thought was really interesting about, about Lydia Bass's uh, divorce. Her attorney was Calvin Worrell. Yes, that Calvin Worrell. The same one we talked about last time. Um, that was her lawyer in 1895. It's a small world, folks. In many ways, of course, um, Benjamin Bass Sr. kind of left the business to his two sons, the barber business. And eventually, um, 10 years later, um, William Bass decided to buy his own place, if you will, and move the business from near the square out to West 8th Street uh, at 215 West 8th. So William does this, and by 1932, in directories, uh, William Bass is listed as a barber at 215, but also as the president of the Alco Social and Political Club. I've done a lot of looking into this, and I have no idea what Alco means. Could it be sure, short for alcohol? Um, that wouldn't make much sense because 
1932 at least, uh, Prohibition was still uh, alive. Not well, but alive. And it would have been very odd for them to list that in the directory. But who knows? Um, by 1935, uh, in all the listings from 32 to 35 to 36 and 37, all of them are listed as um, a pool hall, a barber, and an Alco social and political club of which William Bass was the president. Starting in 1933, um, there were a number of tragedies that befell William Bass. First of all, his mother died in 1933 in February. She was a long time attending a member of the Bethel AME Church. In 1933, kind of the tragedy tragedies continue because in November, uh, William Bass's whole house uh, catches on fire. And there's a news report in the Bloomington Evening World uh, all about this. It says, a house goes up in flames as Bass family flees from beds. Fire early this morning practically destroyed the home of William Bass, Negro, 903 West 6th Street, endangering the lives of Bass and members of his family. Two of Bass' sons awoke to find the fire all about them. They aroused their father, and the family escaped shortly before burning embers crashed about the bedrooms. Firemen were summoned at 3 o'clock and found the house enveloped in flames. They soon succeeded in knocking down the blaze, but the house, a four-room structure, already had been damaged almost beyond repair. That house, um, of course, was rebuilt. still stands uh, today. But it wasn't quite over yet as far as tragedies and then, of course, a little bit of scandal. In 1937, there is a liquor raid on his house. And this is from the Bloomington Telephone, April 26, 1937. Eleven arrested in liquor raid uh, at home of William A. Bass. It says, Ten Negroes, one white woman. Arrested in liquor raid Saturday night. A total of 20 prisoners were taken by Bloomington police during the weekend, nine of them being arrested at various points about the city, and 11 being arrested during a Saturday night raid on William A. Bass's home at 903 West 6th Street, seeking evidence of illegal handling of liquor. After receiving numerous complaints in connection with activities at the Bass home, police under the direction of Chief Claude Myers and Sheriff Jack Gruner, swept down upon the Bass Place at 9.30 p.m. Saturday, armed with a search warrant. All arrested at the Bass home were colored, with the exception of Mary Cummings, age 34. That she was kind of singled out because she was the only one that was white. But I'll say that her record is very long and lengthy as well. In 1933, she was arrested for maintaining a liquor nuisance, and um, that was right at the beginning of the end of Prohibition. Um, but the laws were probably still very strict at that time about what you could have and who you could give it to. That didn't stop Mary because um, she lived right down the street from the William Bass family at 1025 West 6th Street. She was arrested again in 1936, this time not for alcohol-related items, but for assault and battery on her sister while she was intoxicated. So in that case, it was liquor-related. Um, not sure whatever happens to Mary Cummings, but um, she left a track record. After um, William Bass is arrested <clears throat> in 1937, we don't know much except that he moves to Indianapolis. And I don't have much of a record on what happens to him after he leaves Bloomington. We do know that he leaves, and we do know that by 1939, his uh, uh, Alco Social and Political Club and Pool Hall is closed, and that building at 215 West 8th Street is vacant. <laughs>